Hello and welcome. This is Iron Raven, and today I have another random topic of discussion for you. A little bit more Bond talk, as you can see by the title, and that is going to be License to Kill from 1989, because I just saw that today, June 13th, 1989, is when it premiered in the UK, I believe. Uh, I believe in the States it was a month later in July. Uh, but anyway yes license to kill this film is such a gem of the franchise many would say differently or at least more so back then i would say over the years it seems like it's culminated a bit more respect because that reason being is because it is a more edgier bond film something that was done before the craig era because at the time of course this is coming off the back of the Roger Moore era, which as many would describe as the more comedic, more kind of silly era of the franchise, which, yeah, I mean, you look at certain films like The Man with the Golden Gun, The Moonrakers, The Octopussies, <laughs> like that one especially. Yeah, uh, but he's, he's had some more, like, you know, kind of played more straight type films like uh, For Your Eyes Only. Uh, a View to a Kill was played fairly straight as well. You know, so kind of on again, off again. Like, they get a little bit more comedic, and then they kind of pull it back a little bit by the next film. But, yeah, I mean, you come off of that era, and then you jump to a new era with a new actor, and that is Timothy Dalton, which, who first started in 1987 with... The Living Daylights, and so therefore that one was meant to kind of go back to the roots of the character through the books, which is of course more grounded, it's more edgier, it's a bit more darker, and a lot would also say that Timothy Dalton actually probably resembles the character the most from the books. If you actually look at the in in Fleming drawing of the character, he perhaps resembles him the best, and so there you go. So you would think this would be the combination for like the perfect kind of adaptation of the books in that film uh, but many over the years had always kind of criticized Timothy Dalton and kind of looked at him as just like the lesser Bond for some reason and I personally never quite understood that I can understand maybe back then it's a bit jarring like I said you come off of the Roger Moore era you go into this it's like whiplash especially once you get to License to Kill which definitely doubles down on the darkness the the brutality of what the character can actually be i could kind of understand that but like i said i feel like he's gotten more appreciation and understanding of what was happening because he's made two very solid films and i think he is a fantastic bond now you can argue whether he's the best bond or not that is of course entirely up to you different generations different actors spinning across decades that is a, an entirely of course your opinion but he is a very solid bond and with this film license to kill 1989 it is just such a good film the first time i watched it it stuck with me immediately you have just a fun opening action sequence with bond catching the bad, bad guy he's basically fishing him out of a plane and latching and latching the plane and just like hooking him along and just and they do the parachute going into the wedding and all of that and then you get into the song by Gladys Knight, License to Kill. Phenomenal. I don't know why this song doesn't get more love. If you go and listen to it, I wish I could just play it in the background of this video. But if you actually go and listen to it, it just has such a kick. And really does a great job of setting up for the type of film that you're in for. Just something about this film, again, from the get-go just stuck with me. Because it's not a huge big film it's not a lot of glow trotting it's not so heavy-handed on the gadgets it's just more of a personal revenge story because after catching sanchez the villain played by robert davi who is just full of charisma and such charm and who really just cares about loyalty that's the thing with this villain he's not about world domination he's more so about loyalty and basically yeah if you mess with him then he'll mess with you back. It's nothing personal, it's just business, which is a line he gives in the film. And it just works so well for this character. And once you get to the later scenes where Bond going undercover, trying to get in with him to take him down, they have just such a great, fun dynamic. 
and it just adds so much more to the film. But yeah, because after getting caught, he attacks Felix Slyther, a good friend of Bond, a character who's appeared all throughout the franchise. He attacks him, attacks his wife, and so therefore it's a personal revenge story for Bond. And it just works. And, and this is the late 80s, so of course they want, they were kind of going for more like the drug lore, like, you know, like 80s action vibes of the time, which is understandable because all the Bond films always tried to do something, you know, that was relevant to the times. And this kind of makes sense. And again, I can understand why that might be jarring for the audience back then, of course, because coming off that era you're going into this this is not the bond that you've known all of these years but if you really break it down it just works so well so you have the greatness of timothy dalton as bond he was very underrated and just him playing up the revenge element so it's more personal he has a bit more to kind of deliver as far as essence to his character you have the great charm and even likability of Robert Davi as the villain. You have Kiri Lowell as the Bond girl, who also some may know from the original iteration of Law and Order. I don't think, I don't know, remember if she was on there from like the very beginning or she came in a little bit later, but she was on there uh, for a few years. And she's not just the stereotypical Bond girl because of course, and yes, I'm calling her a Bond girl because screw what anyone says about Oh yeah, banning the word Bond Girl on the set of No Time to Die. Forget that because you have characters like Carrie Lowell um, in this film who actually have something to do and she actually kicks ass and she has a very great dynamic with Timothy Dalton in this film. And that is just another great element. You have a great Bond, a great villain, great Bond Girl, and even a fun henchman on the side with Benicio Del Toro. He has this little knife he just switchblade he just flings out <laughs> and he just has like this crooked ass smile throughout the film and it's just hilarious and he gets jacked up pretty well by the end of this movie and that is the thing about it is that the brutality level is definitely cranked up quite a bit i would say even more so than the craig era this film is quite literally the most brutal a guy literally had his head explode in the film <laughs> due to being locked in this little chamber and his head explodes due to the pressure and everything and it's quite graphic if you watch this film yeah it's coming off of Roger Moore it's just like what am I looking at again I can understand for the time but over the years you look at it now I'm like it's a pretty kick-ass film and so yeah it, it just works on so many different levels all the elements work it's the song the villain it, it just stuck with me ever since I watched it. And I, I think you should do yourself a favor. If you have not watched it, I highly suggest you do. Because it doesn't even, you don't even have to watch it. It's just a straight up Bond film. You could just watch it. It's just a solid action film. Because again, it kind of plays off of those 80s action films of the time. And so you really don't have to look at it as like that type of thing. It has, of course, its Bond elements all throughout. You know, there's only one particular over the top moment very late in the film at during the climax you know that's very much a bond moment but it's a fun one and it works in the way that the cue and the music it's just a lot of fun and so i feel like that this film is highly underrated it is definitely one of my personal favorites as well as the song it just everything is just firing on all cylinders i love it so much just do yourself a favor and check it out License to Kill, 1989. What can I say? It speaks for itself. Anyway, that'll do it for this video. Again, just a nice, like, random topic of discussion. Not too random, all things considered. That it's like the anniversary of the release date and all. I figure, what better thing to talk about than this? Nothing really came to mind, so... <laughs> Anyway, yes, that will do it for this video. Like, comment, subscribe if you would. But of course, you have your free will to do so if you really want to. Like, I have the free will to end this video and tell you all to go straight to hell, you dirty animals. <laughs> Bye for now.